we're now going to talk about taking the limits of a function. Here I have a function 3x minus 1, and you see this limit x approaches 2. Well, this means that as x approaches true, we're going to have a trend in the y of this function. And what I want you to know are that we have three different ways we can do this right now. Plan A will always be direct substitution. So what does this mean? If I'm given limit x approaches 2 of the function f of x equals 3x minus 1, always, 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 with zero exceptions, my first and, and best method will be to directly substitute what x is and get 3 times 2 minus 1. Well, of course, i got to follow my order of operations, multiplication and then subtraction. 6 minus 1 is 5. So the problem with this is if I do this and you say, well, the limit is 5, you might have no idea what we're talking about. What this means is as x goes towards 2 from both sides, y is trending towards 5. And if you can find the limit from direct substitution, it means we say the limit is reached and you actually have a point at 2, 5. So our second plan would be to graph it. And you can see the graph should confirm what we're talking about. Well, the function is 3x minus 1, y-intercept of negative 1, slope of up 3 over 1. So this is what our graph looks like. And we are saying as x squeezes in on 2, where is y trending towards? And because direct substitution works, you can see we get this point 2, 5. And this means as x is squeezing in on 2, y is trending towards 5. This is y equals 5 up here. Notice the limit is found on the y-axis. It is so important. It's the trend in y. That's what I think of when I think of limits. It's the trend in y. And if direct substitution works, it's the actual y. We're just chasing y. Actually, we're chasing trends in y. So when I'm finding a limit, this is really my plan C. Why? Because it takes a lot of work. And I, I'm quite frankly, I'm, I'm lazy. I'd rather go and do something else than do this. Look what we're doing. We are picking x's that are extreme. Here is our plan C. <clears throat> Now, why is this plan C? Because it's hard and nobody likes to do this. We can actually pick X and see what the trend in the Y is. So here, X is approaching 2 from the left. I'm squeezing in on X equals 2 from the left. So we say X approaches 2, but a little less. I'm using a superscript to describe that X is just slightly less than 2. So when I plug in 1.99 times 3 minus 1, I get 4.97. I can see when x is 1.99, y, I'm looking at the y's. It's 4.97. If I go even a little bit closer here and I go up and then over, I can see that y goes to 4.997. It's extremely close now to 5. If I come from the other way, now I'm squeezing in x approaches 2 from the right. Values like, here we are, y is 2, what well, x is approaching 2, but a little bit more. That's what that superscript plus means. It's 2, but a little bit more. Values like 2.01. When I put that in to my equation, 2.01 times 3 minus 1 is 5.03. If I go even a little bit closer, I'm going up and I'm seeing what y, the y value is. 2.001 times 3 minus 1 is 5.003. We already know from direct substitution the answer here is 5. But if we didn't know that, then we'd be asking, what is the trend in y? You can see that the y values are squeezing in on 5. So the graph 
and the table should confirm our direct substitution values.